Hello, this lesson is over chapter 9 of Larson's Clinical Chemistry textbook, and it is about clinical chemistry and disease. We're going to start with an open-ended question in the near pod. So Lori's in a doctor's office because she is not feeling well. She has a stuffy nose, a sinus headache, and a scratchy throat. She probably has a cold caused by a virus. She can use over-the-counter medications to help with her symptoms, rest, and drink plenty of fluids. If the doctor had drawn some lab work, let's say a CBC and a BMP, would her results have been normal or abnormal in Y? Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. So first, what would you think? Would you think it would be normal or abnormal with just a common cold? Uh, we're not talking about coronavirus or anything like that. And, and then why? So my, what I would think, my theory is that generally when uh, a patient comes in and there's really no other underlying conditions, they're not diabetics, they don't have kidney issues, and they just have a common cold, they're just not feeling well, that their CBC and P BMP is likely just going to be completely normal. It's not going to show anything. Uh, and that's because it's just a mild illness and it's just not enough to throw any of the values severely out of whack or even increase or decrease the white count uh, outside of the normal ranges. And again, it's just um, because it's a mild illness. All right, so let's go to the definition of illness, of disease, and talk a little bit about cultural influence. So disease is defined by Tabor's Cyclopedic Medical Dictionary as a condition marked by subjective complaints, a specific history, and clinical signs and symptoms in laboratory or radiographic findings. So the subjective complaints are really what the patient's complaining about, but it's subjective because you cannot see it or witness it. Something like, I feel tired, I have a headache, I don't feel good, um, and you know those are all subjective because you just have to take the person at their word that that's what's going on. Uh, specific history, usually meaning this has been going on for a day, two days, a few hours, a week, uh, and there's a, a pattern of symptoms associated with it. And then the clinical signs and symptoms, signs are things that are objective, things that you can measure or see or document. So a sign would be a rash, a sign would be a temperature, a sign would be an elevated blood pressure. Um, a symptom is something that a patient feels, so it'll be usually related to the subjective complaints. It could be things as uh, nausea and vomiting, uh, again, headache, any kind of pain, all of those are symptoms. And of course, your laboratory or radiographic findings are objective data. Uh, disease is also based on the old French word meaning lack of ease, dis, ease. Um, and different cultures view diseases differently. Um, some have a mistrust in the medical establishment and also some uh, will have the concept that as long as you don't go to the doctor or don't go to the hospital, then there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, Sometimes it's, fine. it's hard for um, varying cultures to find culturally appropriate care and afford to shy away from the uh, traditional medical establishment. Uh, and of course, these perceptions can then affect diagnosis and treatment because if there is not a trust, there's not a relationship, and they're not willing to really uh, you know, seek help from the system, then a lot of times they wait until things are unbearable and they have to go, or things have progressed so much that there's extensive damage that's already been done. Or for example, if it was a cancer, uh, they may not even seek care till now they're stage four. And of course that will then affect the treatment that they're going to get. All right, pathology is the study of changes in the body's structure or function that are produced by disease. This is useful because with pathology, then um, we've been associ being able to associate different uh, signs, symptoms, um, and you know, uh, tests with disease, and it helps link, um, helps diagnose disease, and uh, study and understand it. Health and disease describe the condition of a person, so a person is healthy or a person is ill, has a disease. And uh, normal versus abnormal are uh, related to objective interpretation of data. So results are normal or results are abnormal. 
and that is based on reference ranges and reference ranges are established um, studying the healthy population and uh, reference range is usually uh, statistically what 95 percent of he normal healthy adults um, their values would be and so that gives a healthcare provider an indication then of the extent of an abnormality so how far out of range is this patient is it barely out of range is it way out of range and then that could of course um, you know relate to the extent of the damage or the extent of um, the disease that's going on let's talk a little bit about the role of cells in disease so cells are the building blocks of our entire body um, cells are assembled into tissues in tissues into organs which of course in our or in assemble into organ systems which make up the body and everything that happens in the body really happens at the cellular level the cells are responsible for all the metabolism all the reactions everything happens in the cells a cell uh, is usually composed of a nucleus a cytoplasm and a cell membrane with some organelles such as mitochondria uh, represented here some ribosomes um, Golgi apparatus or endoplasmic reticulum um, that's a typical cell there are some cells for example that don't, that don't have a nucleus to, like the red cells but generally the cells have all these components and the cell um, its internal structure in um, its um, cytoplasm everything must be maintained uh, into balance into homeostasis uh, and if there are imbalances that happen at the cellular level then those can indicate disease for example if the cell was a hepatocyte and uh, we had a hepatitis infection and it was destroying the hepatocytes these would be um, the cells would be destroyed and be releasing enzymes so we talk about um, in the last lesson and uh, those enzymes like AST and LT would be released in the bloodstream and you would could test for those and see what was going on Let's talk a little bit about disease mechanisms so inflammation is a reaction to injury or to invasion by microbes injury can be things like you know a cut or a sprain or tendonitis and uh, invasion by microbes obviously we're thinking viruses bacteria fungi etc immunity uh, is usually refers to antibody production although you also have cell to cell immunity where uh, certain lymphocytes can destroy body cells that are infected with viruses or that are cancerous or, or that just need to, not too old they're dysfunctional they're abnormal and they need to be uh, eliminated um, immunity and antibody produ production can also lead to possible autoimmunity that's an overproduction of antibodies or it's a production of antibodies to actually to help healthy normal tissue uh, cell death can be either programmed or premature um, an example of programmed cell death that you would be familiar with is the fact that red cells only live 120 days therefore after that their death is programmed that's they've reached the end of their life um, premature cell death happens then when that cell is prematurely damaged there's cancer uh, changes cancer changes or there's uh, they've been invaded by viruses something of the nature that makes it where it's become a non-functional cell it needs to be destroyed necrosis happens when cells die faster than it can be removed and then you have that's a tissue an area of tissue death you do have to realize that um, cells do die all the time and they're replaced all the time this is a normal process so necrosis only happens if it's it happens faster than they can be cleared there are also cellular adaptations that are evidence of disease hyperplasia is an increase in specific cells so then that tissue will be thicker then contain more of those specific cells so it's an increase in numbers of those cells metaplasia is a change from one cell type to another an example of metaplasia would be um, smoking in the lungs can cause your um, pseudostratified epithelial cells to turn into squamous epithelial cells and change their function uh, neoplasia is going to be new uncontrolled growth uh, meaning because it's uncontrolled usually neoplasms cancers uh, tumors etc a little bit on the biochemistry of disease we've already hinted at uh, and talked about some of these concepts but um, 
the uh, body chemistry changes is usually what is detected by test. So again, we're looking for results um, outside of normal, either higher or lower than the reference range. Uh, the sensitivity of a test means that uh, it's, it means its ability to uh, detect a disease, as in basically how how sensitive, how low of the the analyte you're trying to detect can it detect? Um, but also um, the fact that it would can also rule out disease, so it would be negative in the absence of disease. So a a if it was a positive negative test, a person that didn't have the disease would test negative. Specificity means that it's speak, it's picking up specifically that disease and not cross-reacting with another one. So it's only positive in the presence of that disease, and it's not positive if you don't have the disease. Um, test sensitivity and specificity is never 100%. Uh, it's usually somewhere, good tests are somewhere in the 90s. Um, some of the coronavirus tests that we had were e even as low as in the upper 60s. So it's something to uh, look at when you select a test is how sensitive and how specific that test is, uh, especially or a testing method. And of course, because of that, the laboratory test must always be used in conjunction with the patient's health history and current symptoms because you could have a false positive or you could have a false negative. Um, sometimes things can happen, mistakes can be made as we have talked about before where um, maybe a specimen get mislabeled or wrong patient get stuck. So it's really good to always interpret results in the context of what's going on with a patient. A little bit about laboratory analytes in assay. So the analytes are the biomolecules that we are detecting that are normally part in the body or that are produced as a result of disease. And the assays are the methods by which we detect them. It's the tests that have been created. And creating these tests or these assays does take time. So, um, for example, a new assay could be made if a new molecule got discovered through research and it had a practical clinical application, such as it would be useful to have a test that's widely av available to measure that specific analyte. And so uh, the biotech companies would go through the process of assay development. And um, in that process, they have to use a negative control group. So that would be a, a group that is healthy and does not have the disease, and obviously also a group that has a disease. So you have to be able to do trials to see, and that's how you calculate, by the way, the specificity and the sensitivity is uh, you know running your tests in healthy people and running your tests in people to have the disease and to see your rate of you know false positive false negative true positive true negatives and then do your calculations um in assays levels could be either higher or lower in a disease sometimes it's the lack of something that causes a disease or sometimes it's the overabundance of something that causes a disease so of course that varies from assay to assay the whole process of assay development can take up to uh, 10 years drugs are taken take up to 15 so it's quite time consuming and it's very interesting to know some of the tests that were developed for coronavirus hit were developed and hit market just within months. Uh, and if you look into them, you'll see that some of them, their sensitivity and specificity are not that great. Like the, some of the antigen tests were that way. The PCR ones were way better. And so laboratory tests have to go through the whole through the FDA uh, in order to be used in most clinical lab. The FDA makes sure that things that are put on our market and are out there for sale are safe, meaning in our context that they're you're not going to be turning out erroneous results that which could lead to um, you know patients being harmed by the treatment or by false results uh, because of the tests uh, not working right. And then lastly, we're going to talk briefly about the different clinical chemistry departments. Um, so uh, within a clinical chemistry department in a lab, you will have usually the routine chemistry bench. This is where you do your routine testing, obviously. So things like glucoses, electrolytes, all your BMPs and CMP, kidney functions, liver function tests, um, those 
regular kind of chemistry. Then you have your therapeutic drug monitoring and your toxicology. So therapeutic drug monitoring would be testing certain antibiotics like vancomycin and genomycin levels, maybe some of the heart drugs like digoxins. And your toxicology is going to be testing for alcohol, testing for acetaminophen, um, potentially also, of course, your urine drug screens would fall under toxicology. Blood gas analysis has largely been handed off to our respiratory therapists, but some labs still have it. And if they have it, it's usually in the clinical chemistry department. But your CRTs and RRTs are your respiratory techs. Lastly, um, there's special chemistry in body fluids. So special chemistry usually um, refers to hormonal testing, um, cancer markers, tumor antigens, cancer antigens, those, those types of testing. And then uh, new vitamins also would fall under this. And then body fluids are going to be testing things like spinal fluids, uh, peritoneal fluid, uh, even sometimes urines. Um, and so there you go. That's a quick overview of this chapter, very short. And um, we'll move on in the next video to the next chapter.